Welcome to the 700 Club. Let's go over to the CBN newsroom for today's top stories. Gordon, the first major abortion ruling in the Trump era is a bitter disappointment for the pro-life movement. The decision throws out a law requiring Louisiana abortion doctors to have admitting privileges at an area hospital. Paul Strand has this look at the ruling and what it could mean for the future of the Supreme Court. Pro-life forces are upset and reeling after the court ruling siding with abortion clinics. The justices wiping the law out wrote, Louisiana's law poses a substantial obstacle to women seeking an abortion. The law offers no significant health-related benefits. The law consequently imposed an undue burden on a woman's constitutional right to choose to have an abortion. Pro-lifers say it could have protected women's health. When an abortion goes wrong, and we all know that sometimes they do tragically wrong, that women who have sought that abortion still deserve the same emergency care as any other woman. Chief Justice Roberts again surprised conservatives as he sided with the court's four liberals. We're disappointed in today's decision and we're disappointed in Justice Roberts who chose for the abortion facilities and their interests over protecting the health and safety of women. What we have today is a very bitterly disappointing decision, especially on the part of the Chief Justice for, for his flip-flop. The Democratic state senator behind the now dead law. Once again, unelected justices have substituted their policy preferences over the clear will of the people of my great state. As long as the Supreme Court continues to meddle in an area that rightfully belongs in the democratic process, women will remain subject to substandard abortion facilities. Justice Thomas, in a lone dissent, really tackled his fellow justices. He said none of the court's abortion decisions have been supported by the U.S. Constitution, and he labeled them collectively a creation that should be undone. He also wrote, despite the readily apparent illegitimacy of Roe, the court has doggedly adhered to its core holding again and again, often to disastrous ends. Their job is to apply the words, the original meaning of the United States Constitution. But the pro-abortion rights group NARAL stated, even a court tilted so far right couldn't ignore the concrete arguments and data showing that public health is compromised by these burdensome restrictions on abortion. But now many are asking, is the court actually all that conservative? What this decision shows us is that the conservative majority the court watchers now thought held sway in the court may not be real. Chief Justice Roberts was thought to be a pretty firm conservative vote, but he has sided repeatedly with the four more liberal justices. When he does it on an issue as precious to conservatives as abortion, it means probably every issue is up in the air. Paul Strand, CBN News, the Supreme Court. This decision is certainly virtually to make the Supreme Court a major political issue again in this election year. Vice President Mike Pence tweeting, we need more conservative justices on the Supreme Court. And top religious conservatives who support the president pointed out his two appointees ruled in favor of upholding the Louisiana law, making the case he should get another term in office to possibly nominate more justices. On the Faith Nation program on the CBN News Channel, Mallory Quigley of pro-life group Susan B. Anthony List also spoke about the importance of the Supreme Court and possible new justices. The abortion lobby for decades has been able to run to the court. That's been their backstop. Um, we, we don't advance any further from this point, but we haven't taken any steps back. Um, and we, we know that now that the president's um, two appointed justices, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, they came down on the right side and that they're going to stand with pro-lifers. So that, that is encouraging. What does this mean for the future of Roe v. Wade? Yes, well, this means that the, it underscores the importance of the upcoming election. We need another pro-life vote on the Supreme Court. Chief Justice Roberts is not going to be that person. The legal battles over abortion aren't over. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds signed into law a bill Monday that requires women to wait 24 hours before getting an abortion. The bill is set to go into effect tomorrow, but has already been challenged in court by Planned Parenthood. A state's court judge must now decide whether or not to stop the law from going into effect. Planned Parenthood said in its lawsuit filed last week, the bill is unconstitutional in the way it was passed in the middle of the night without public debate. The state's assistant attorney general said there is nothing wrong with quickly passing legislation overnight. The worst is yet to come. That is the World Health, what the World Health Organization says about the coronavirus outbreak as infections are on the rise in the U.S. in 32 states. 
Although the death rate is down, hospitals across the country are beginning to reach mass capacity, causing many governors to once again begin closing down some parts of their states. Caitlin Burke is on this story. From California to Florida, bars, beaches, movie theaters, gyms, all closing down once again as COVID cases spike in multiple states, including Texas. We shouldn't have launched the reopening until we had testing and tracing in a better place. So we started too soon. This morning, 36,000 new cases reported nationwide. Still high, but down from the record of 45,000 on Friday. In Austin, field hospitals are now being prepared after surpassing 70% hospital capacity. A more grim situation in Arizona, where only 13% of ICU beds in the entire state are currently available. Patients are suffering. They're on ventilators for weeks. Families cannot be here. There are patients begging me not to put them on the breathing machine because they know that they might die and might never talk to their families again. Tucson doctor Brad Dreyfus says healthcare workers are close to breaking. It's not like you can just walk away from people you've been caring for in your community or someone you've been caring for in the ICU for three weeks. No, you're there, you're in it, you're with them. And that's why it's so emotionally exhausting. Despite low numbers in New York and New Jersey, both governors are considering a pause to their state's reopening after seeing what's happening in other areas. The World Health Organization says this pandemic is not even close to being over, but is in fact speeding up. The answer? Test, trace, isolate, and quarantine. Meanwhile, hospitalizations have climbed for 15 days in Florida. Starting this morning, masks will be required in Miami and Jacksonville, where the Republican National Convention is scheduled to be held in August. Caitlin Burke, CBN News. In Washington, members of Congress in both parties are calling for more information. After reports, Russia secretly offered bounties to militants linked to the Taliban for killing American troops in Afghanistan. Lawmakers also want consequences for Russia and its president, Vladimir Putin. The White House says the president was never told about reports because they hadn't been verified. But that has, that has not been good enough for Democrats. There were dissenting opinions within the intelligence community, and it would not be elevated uh, to the president until it was verified. Republicans say the intelligence is proven. They encouraged the White House to act quickly and to hold Vladimir Putin's Russia regime accountable. Republican Senator John Cornyn said it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. The Taliban is trying to kill Americans and Russians have encouraged it, adding intelligence committees and Nancy Pelosi, as well as Schumer, had been briefed on this for months. I want to turn now to Israel. Media, media reports there today quoted American officials saying Israel will wait to start annexing parts of the biblical Judea and Samaria in the West Bank. That move is part of President Trump's Middle East peace plan. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl brings us the story now from Jerusalem. U.S. officials are here in Israel holding meetings with Israeli leaders. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said he would bring the plan to extend Israeli sovereignty and law over 30 percent of the West Bank to a vote as early as tomorrow, July 1st. But the path to making that vote happen has been complicated. In a taped address to the annual conference of Christians United for Israel this week, Netanyahu didn't mention annexation, instead talking about the virtues of President Trump's Middle East peace plan. It makes clear that the Jewish people have a valid legal, historic and moral claim to Judea and Samaria, and it supports Israel's sovereignty over the Jewish communities there. Netanyahu's partner in Israel's unity government, alternate prime minister and defense minister Benny Gantz, praised the annexation deal, but he said the plan to vote on it tomorrow isn't sacred and told his blue and white party that dealing with COVID-19 is Israel's priority. Together we will win against the coronavirus, and together we will deal with the economic and social consequences of this medical phenomenon. Anything unrelated to the battle against the coronavirus will wait for the days after the virus. But analysts question if Gantz is really committed to going ahead with the annexation plan. Israelis have been divided over the plan, including the 450,000 who live in Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria. 
I'm for uh, applying Israel's sovereign rights over all of Judea and Samaria, but, um, you know, I'll take 3%. The question is, what's going to be on the other hand of this, of this deal? Is this just going to be applying the sovereignty, applying the law over this area, or is this going to be also a creation of a terrorist state within the heart of Israel? Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem.